and we are now being recorded. So good morning, welcome. It is Wednesday, March the 3rd, 2021. And this is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. Um, my name is Trisha Gordon. I'm at the University of Virginia and I'm facilitating the call today. Um, so let's start off with a couple of announcements. I think Wilma, you just added one. Yep, um, we just cut our CO2. Um, so um, we're hoping to release 21.0 by the end of next week. I put mid-March just to you know leave a little wiggle room um, in case there's any blockers that come up. But we're hoping with our CO2 being cut this week that next week will be our CO3 and it will only be maybe you know less than a week um, unless there's any blockers from there to the release. So um, hopefully by the end of next week. Great. That's exciting. Yep. Very exciting. And I have an announcement. Um, I have already shared with Wilma and Charles that um, UVA is in the middle of our upgrade to 20.1. And uh, I'm also retiring later this summer. So this is my last session of facilitating the teaching and learning calls. And I am looking for a replacement to help um, facilitate these calls along with Charles and Wilma when, whenever anybody else is not available. Um, if you are interested, uh, you can let me know. Uh, here's my email address. I'll type it in. Let me just keep it simple. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to retirement, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, it's, it's, I've been talking about it for several years, so um, and now it's finally about to happen, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm going to miss working with all of you, that is for sure, and uh, I, I do wish you all well and um, much success in all of your future endeavors at your schools and in the Sakai community. Um, it's such an awesome community and I'm really honored and um, proud to be a part of it and to have been a part of it all these years. So thanks to all of you, you've made it really a wonderful experience for me. So thank you very much. Well, Trisha, I know I speak for a lot of folks when I say that the teaching and learning calls will not be the same without you. So <laughs> you, you will definitely you. be missed, and um, and we'll. I'm sure you're you're looking forward to retirement and wish you all the best. But you know we're going to miss you. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> it is it is a little bittersweet because yeah I'm too, yeah. But congratulations. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move on into our presentation. Uh, Marty, I'm going to give you presenter privileges. So if you have something to share on the screen, that would be awesome. And you're going to go ahead and lead us in a discussion about managing TA permissions in Gradebook. And I'm really excited to hear about this or to discuss it. Why I gotta follow up a retirement announcement? That's not fair. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I should have waited till the end. <laughs> um, yeah. So I have actually another item that some local instructional designers are pressing hard. I will put it nicely uh, for me to bring to the team. So I may bring that up second as well. But the first one that they wanted to bring up um, is within the grade book, and I'll share in a second. Um, with the current UI, they've found that some of the instructors they work with frequently uh, have misunderstandings about if they have TAs, what permissions they have, and how to go about uh, giving them permission. Um, so let me share one of these screens. All right, so you guys have the, I'm assuming, the Hall of Mirrors effect right now? Yes, cool. Um, it's just, starting. oh yeah, Hall of Mirrors, okay. there it is. <laughs> so let me pull up our Duke local one. And then also I've got a couple of nightly ones here. Great. How about I move big blue button to a different window just so I can see what I'm showing. 
Um, so their, their main gripe is around, I think I have TAs in this one, uh, having all the TAs under a dropdown menu, I think is the big gripe for them. Um, I ran a query and we do have some courses that have, let's say a lot of TAs. One actually had 36 TAs in it. And so going through, and if you want to change the permissions of, uh, say, two of those TAs because maybe they're graduate students and not undergrads. Um, and Duke has some policy around what some TAs can do and what can't to go along with FERPA. Um, they have to go through and select each one. So this is not a great example. I only have one, um, but we have had one or two instructors that think that the check mark has some sort of power here and that if you don't have a check mark on someone that it means they don't have power. Um, actually within the menu, not within what shows up there. Um, so with the current UI being selecting one and maybe going to trunk would be a better, and I made sure to enroll a couple here. Say you wanted these three TAs that have different permissions, you'd have to go to each one individually. You wouldn't be able to do kind of a bulk change um, within this site alone. So maybe Zachary doesn't allow to see the course grade, um, maybe then going to uh, Albert and saying he can view, but he can only view this section. So going through and changing this individually for large um, TA courses would be a bear. Uh, but then also uh, just kind of bringing that all out front so you can compare them as well next to each other. Um, so what I envision potentially is getting rid of the drop down altogether and just having the student names and their permissions listed out there. That way you can do a bulk change uh, by having everyone there, changing all their settings and then clicking save once versus clicking the drop down, going to that student, making the changes, then doing the saves there. Um, I th think that would be a little better. Now, granted the 36 students one that I described is an outlier. Um, I didn't pull up a, uh, I didn't do the query to kind of get an average per sites, but we do have uh, about the query I did do did say that the, about one out of every three courses had TAs, but not how many on average they had. Um, and even with a 36 TA class, which again, I think is way far out there, um, that the page would be a little long, but I mean, 36 of these would not be terribly long compared to some pages. Uh, so I haven't done any sort of mock-ups for this, but I wanted to get feedback on um, what this would do, how it would look, uh, to see where we can go from there. So I, I think this sounds great. Um, I'd love to see just the TAs listed there with the little these little sections. Uh, maybe you could keep like how there's a horizontal rule under the add rule. Maybe you could have each TA sort of in between horizontal rules. Yeah, definitely um, some sort keep of it organized. Yeah, definitely um, the board is there some sort of barrier to make sure you know you're editing Zachary and not some other TA. Uh, I'll probably work with uh, Michael Green on that since he's more of a design uh, person than I am. Uh, but we wanted to get some thoughts on it before creating some of that work in the Jira. So I definitely like to see the TA name as the uh, as a heading. So I don't know what level heading level select a grader to edit currently is, but I assume it would be that whatever level that is H3. I don't know, um, or maybe H2 for each TA's name. Um, actually, I'm thinking you know it could be nice if they were kind of collapsible sections, but open by default, like each TA. Um, you know, little group of of things could be a potentially a collapsible section, but all you know, start out all of them open, so that if an instructor did want to like close up some of them and not look at them all at once, uh, they could. I don't know. Well, even go, probably going further from that is kind of doing similar to. Um, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of these the way that at least they're currently implemented. Uh, I don't know the official name of these boxes here, uh, but having, as you describe, having them expand it all, but then having an expand all that kind of opens all of them up. And so if that is the default, uh, still having this collapse all option, um, I don't think it would look very good probably uh, 
with the exact same UI as we have here. Again, I'm not a huge fan of these bounding boxes here um, and with the color into the background, um, but something kind of along these lines, I think is what you're describing with an yes. expand all and collapse all. Yeah, but not even an expand all, just have, a, have them expanded by default and then you can collapse all or collapse individual ones as needed. As you click on them like that. Yeah, yeah if you want to. Um, I mean, obviously, those collapsible sections need to be made keyboard uh, and screen reader accessible. And um, I know the lessons page ones are not uh, very keyboard and screen reader accessible, but the tests and quizzes ones are pretty decent. Um, but yeah, something like that where you can collapse them, but they're they're expanded by default because. Yeah. OK. Um, Accordions, uh, Matthew has. Uh, commented in the chat yeah the accordion uh sections uh okay so let me jot down some of the notes in the etherpad then uh so we tiffany you said we want to make sure uh ta names are header uh actually Um, I got those two, two items in the etherpad, the TA's names as headers, potentially use accordions like the lessons and quiz settings, but with all expanded by default with collapse all. Did that get the gist of the two of those, I think? Yeah. I'm curious, are, are any of your instructors asking for like additional TA permissions? Because that's a big um, concern we have at UVA that the there isn't the option to give TAs, for example, the ability to import grades. So we have a lot of um, uh, classes where and TAs will have their own discussion sections and they'll do grading of assignments and things in their discussion sections. And the instructor then wants them to import uh, their grades that they have done in their own gradebook into the course gradebook. And they can't do the import unless they have instructor uh, role in the site. So we're in a very unique situation. Um, I've only been at Duke for about a year and a half, but kind of coming through this TA permissions and another ticket for another TA related thing. Um, I went and compared the uh, TA default permissions in Nightly and then the TA permissions in our production environment. And our TAs are actually more powerful than our instructors. Um, so I don't know when that happened or why that happened. Uh, so we're actually going through a review to kind of rein in some of those to decide what the TA should and shouldn't be able to do. Um, we're going to be in a very unique situation now, though, because uh, instructors may have become used to what their TAs can do. Uh, we want to make sure we're following all FERPA laws and Duke policies, though, uh, and some of those TA permissions may be breaking one or both of those. So we have to go through and kind of do some testing to find out which TA permissions we kind of want to rein in on uh, because we are on the far scope right now, I would say, of what the TAs can and can't do. So I wouldn't say we're in that uh, boat yet, um, but also in my personal opinion, I think the TAs probably have, currently they have too much permission, um, but there's conflicting statements, at least locally, of instructors want the TAs to be able to do some grading but then they don't want them to be able to see the grade book, which doesn't really make sense to me because if you can see all the assignments and all the grades and all the quizzes and all the submissions and grades for those and whatever else gets graded, I mean, it's more complicated for them to kind of suss out a final grade for a student, but they can do it. Um, so little conflicts like that are something that we want to resolve. Um, I haven't had anyone say they want more permissions uh, for TAs, we do have some like comp science and some other arts and sciences that want to rein in some of them. Um, but they have very unique scenarios for one of those schools that they have undergraduate TAs, they have head undergraduate TAs, which I'm not sure the exact difference within the school is. 
and then they have graduate TAs. And we are trying pretty hard not to have to create additional TA roles. Um, I don't like having different roles for essentially the same thing, especially since uh, if you start to go down that road, you'll find that what we think a TA should do is probably not what a lot of TAs or a lot of instructors want their TAs to do. Uh, maybe just because of workload, they want their TAs to do more, um, but that may then again, break policies. So we're kind of damned if we do, damned if we don't at this point, uh, if we make changes, but at this point we just have TAs that are too powerful in our opinion. So we're gonna be going back and looking at that. <laughs> that that's kind of funny because um, in our in our instance in Gradebook Classic, the TAs could do everything by default, you know, well, e period, basically. <laughs> I mean, they could do everything. They could, you know, create gradebook items, adjust the settings, all that stuff. And so a lot of our instructors had their TAs basically doing all of the grading and some of them, some of the instructors specifically have TAs whose job it is solely to do grading <laughs> and enter grades. Um, so, uh, so it's kind of interesting that like the features that our instructors really want are ones that others want to remove. Uh, you know, I, I understand the desire to have like no permissions by default and the instructor has to give them permissions as needed um or you know minimal permissions and then the instructor gives them more or something like that um but our default is that you know most instructors want their tas to just grade everything and where they can't they they don't like that it's funny <laughs> yeah and then that that comes into like a conflict of uh interpretation of like FERPA laws of should the tas be able to see grades or see submissions um because there was one court case, I don't have it offhand, but it's pretty much a long time ago when LMS was in their infancy uh, around if a TA enters a grade in a grade book, is it protected by FERPA? Because maybe it's not technically an official grade yet because it's not the instructor that entered the grade or even reviewed the grade. But if that instructor never goes to review the grade or finalize it in some sense, does that mean it's finalized when the TA does it? So interpretation of that kind of workflow um, is kind of up to each, I guess, individual university. So we may have to get our law team involved to kind of tell us, okay, what can they do and what can't they do? There needs to be a line in the sand, not a gray area. If instructors want to give them extra permissions, that's on them. Uh, but then they would be the ones breaking any laws, not us by giving them by default. I mean, I guess... It also has to do with the sort of levels of TAs that you guys have versus us. Uh, in most cases, I mean, I think it's very, very rare uh, at UVA for people to have undergrad graders and those who do maybe have them grade in assignments and that's it. Um, but, um, you know, most of our TAs are graduate students who um, in some cases are the sole instructor of the course. There isn't an additional uh instructor just the the ta who's who's teaching yeah that, <clears throat> that's the way we are as well and we actually have two teaching assistant roles in our system one is a teaching assistant that can do a lot of things that an instructor can do as far as adding content and, and grading everything and then we have a ta grades only which are restricted to just being able to grade things um, they can't generally add or edit or delete content. Yeah, at the first university I worked at many, like, 10 years ago now at this point, uh, we were using Moodle, and it quickly spiraled out of control where we ended up with, like, eight different roles in total uh, because everyone wanted a role for instructors, different types of TAs, librarians, where there was a lot of gray area between them. Um, but that's getting off track from this whole TA talk. Uh, so we're, we're trying pretty hard to avoid creating multiple TAs ourselves, but we understand the need for it. And we just want to make sure we change some permissions. Um, so I guess jumping back, I, I appreciate both of you guys' feedback. Uh, so I'll take that in advisement on uh, kind of how we roll things out and kind of how we may start to design this stuff, um, at least when it comes to the uh, permissions within the gradebook itself. Uh, any other thoughts on that one? Uh, I think I'm 
in your time. I can mention the other topic I had, but I want to make sure there's time for other stuff as well. Uh, I just wanted to raise that because we do have these um, requests for additional permissions, we actually have a JIRA out about it, um, and I'll put that in the chat. And so there may be more on this page for each TA <laughs> by the time that gets done. Um, you know, more options for each TA, like more little drop downs or whatever. Uh, I, I don't remember what they all look like, but um, I think there's like two or three little drop downs to select what sections you want them to grade and stuff. Cool. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Is that currently being worked on or is it, it looks like it was last touched in September? Yeah, um, well, we're working on a local upgrade and I, I think we're going to try to work on it at least in our own instance, our own 20 instance uh, soon. I mean, the developers are looking into whether it's, you know, how possible it is and all that. So uh, that, know, uh, whether or not it happens soon is, is a question, but. <laughs> I, I know we're close to time, but one thing that I do want to try here at the end is would it be beneficial to make this UI be group aware? So that way the instructor could create a TA group and then grant to that group a set of permissions as opposed to individually editing students, or is the check boxes for multiple students sufficient? That sounds like a great idea to me, Adam, I to have a, a group was. option. Is it? Because under no. select grader to edit, you cannot select a group of graders to edit. So right. you, you oh. You're talking the opposite. You're you're putting TAs in a group versus putting students. Correct. Yeah. Uh, initially, I, I I can't think of at least locally where that would be. It would make this even quicker. Um, that part I understand. If you are able to say, okay, these are the head TAs, your graduate TAs, these are the undergraduate, and that would have uh, probably avoid the issues around creating multiple roles. Um, the only downside to the approach I can see is that the instructor might inadvertently give a permission to a member of the group that they didn't anticipate doing so. But they could do that anyway <laughs> at an individual point. level. Yeah, and I, I, I got to think that the groups are mostly designed to be within or used with uh, within the tools, other tools itself for like submissions or some sort of. Um, I guess act, this is access to, but like different access of, I want to restrict access to this file, to this one group. I want to restrict access to this quiz, to this one group. Um, and if they accidentally do that with the TA group or get confused that it may not, I could see it probably not having any harm of like a TA group selected to as one of them to take a quiz because they won't be able to take the quiz. Um, but it could muddle those interfaces as well. I'm not sure that having groups is going to muddle anything because we already use them, but um, I, I think it's a good idea personally. Yeah, I, I think um, the ability to assign things to groups is, you know, is a great idea. Um, it, it would simplify things, I think, for the instructor. Mm -hmm. Well, what also could be beneficial is that if you were in a course with 30 TAs, it gives the instructor a way to communicate with those TAs by group as opposed to by role within messages. Mm -hmm. That I kind of like. Yeah. So I think there could be advantages in other tools as well. For sure. The onus is on the instructor to create the group, but once done, there's right. convenience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, Are we? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If we're not done, keep going. No, I, I was just going to point out one other advantage of groups. Uh, if you have the permission set right for tests and quizzes, you can have simultaneous graders of different groups. If a TA can't grade all the students, they can only grade students in their group. Um, you can actually have two TA grading, two TAs grading the same assessment without uh, overwriting each other's work, which is really cool. Just discovered that recently. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. There would have to be some sort of logic put in here, though, to check for if someone, if 
they if an instructor groups a TA with other TAs that have certain permissions, but then individually gives them maybe different permissions for some reason because they didn't know they put them in that group. Um, there just have to be a order of operations to kind of take the probably the highest level uh, for whatever permissions there that specific user is set at. Fair so point. So messy. The one danger with making this group aware I see is if you inadvertently select a student group and make them a grader. Uh, right now, this grader permissions table goes off section.role.ta. And if it's group aware, it may not know that a group only contains section.role.ta users. So it would need to do a pretty deep search. It would need to not only search for group list, but it would also need to make sure that the group didn't contain anyone with section.role.student. Or so, presumably yeah, section.role.instructor. The onus, and of course, instructors are not going to know uh, anything about all of that. Um, so the onus is to create groups for the this purpose that only include people who are in the TA role in the site. Right, but this page would have to know that the group only contains TAs. That's, maybe, that's it could only, maybe it could only present groups that are only TAs. <laughs> right, that's what I mean. So it, yeah. it would need logic in the system to do that. And I don't know what kind of database searching yeah. and potential performance issues that could cause. Yeah, maybe that's a phase two for the groups. Yeah, and, and Matthew in the chat brings up a good point that it would also have to lock the group or put some kind of warning if the instructor attempted to add a student to it. That's, yeah, that's a whole nother groups management effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that at first, yeah. but yeah. yeah. That's a really good point. So maybe down the road, but initially then just without the groups. It's a yeah, really cool idea. I hope it does happen, but um, I think it would be too challenging to attempt that right off the bat. Yep, I think so too. All right, are we ready to, uh, um, Marty, if you want to just mention your other item? Sure, uh, so the other one was around uh, language within quizzes around the penalty factor for quizzes. Um, we've had a couple of instructors that get kind of caught up on language. Um, this mm -hmm. does look like it changes for uh, 21. So I, I haven't shown that to our instructional designers that are the ones reporting this, um, but I'll, I can do that after this. Uh, there's quite a few instructors that get caught up by this language of points deducted for incorrect answer. From my side, it completely makes sense because mm -hmm. you're, this is the point value you would get if you get it right. This is the point value if you want to deduct if it gets wrong. So these are two completely separate actions of adding and subtracting, but we have had some instructors that can get confused by that, even though it says optional. Um, and I actually ran a query that uh, I'd have to pull up Slack to find the numbers, um, but it was not a very high number. It just seems that the ones that do get stumbled on it are very vocal to our instructional designers. Um, so in 21, this language changes a little bit to, uh, let's get to one, to include enable negative marking. So I'm hoping this language change here is a little bit better. Uh, but essentially what I said I would do for our instructional designers, I would bring up uh, if we wanted to change this language slightly to say penalty for incorrect answer versus points deducted, um, because there's yeah. too much uh, aggregating in their minds that these two boxes need to be filled out, uh, mm -hmm. and that they're the same thing. Yeah, so it's always been called negative marking. I think true false doesn't include the enable box. If you change the question type right now to true false, don't you see the same like points, just points deducted for incorrect answer? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I would think guessing penalty or wrong answer 
guessing penalty, something like that, um, would be a fine language for it. I mean, the, the the intent for those is is sort of a guessing penalty, right? Correct. It, I totally get what it's there for. Um, so yeah. that they, I mean, if there's only if it's true false, I got a 50 50 chance. I'm better off, and I don't know the answer. I'm better off leaving it alone than guessing sometimes. Um, I think penalty is a really good clear word. Okay. <laughs> So I, I wanted, I mainly wanted to bring this up because I mean, I can go through locally and change this in a message bundle or very quickly, but then I would have to own that in all documentation going forward in every version. So ideally mm -hmm. I wanted, if I got some sort of consensus that this could be instead uh, done at core level. Um, so if I open a JIRA, it says, let's change this from points deducted for incorrect answer to maybe penalty for incorrect answer and create a uh, subtask for each type that has this. Um, that way that could be put into core versus just locally done. We actually, at our institution, we actually used message bundle manager in order to modify three bundles within Samago regarding negative marking. We wanted to be explicit because there was confusion. So we actually said that points deducted for an incorrect answer would cause the assessment taker to earn less than zero points if they get the question incorrect. Penalty has the implication of doing so, but making it explicit lets the instructor know that they are penalizing the student for poor performance. So did you do that in the uh, this one field or did you do that in like say this field to be more informative? We actually did it everywhere. So points deducted for incorrect answer became points deducted for incorrect answer, parenthesis, causing assessment taker to earn less than zero points. Uh, and then there's also a bundle for random draw deduction and enabling negative marking. So we hit them over the head with it. By chance, would you I, be able to like throw in some screenshot or links to screenshots in the etherpad so I could take a look at those later? Um, sure. I have some concern with making the actual label that long because screen reader users are going to hear that um, every time they encounter it. Uh, well, we can probably revisit if if we um, if we get a Jira on this and in a future Jira Palooza and just tweak that language if we sure. think we need to. Uh, yeah. Um, how about I do this? One other, one other suggestion might be something like putting a negative sign in front of the, the field. Like they will earn negative X points if they get this wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Instead of saying zero, because like you know, um, I don't know how that would be worded, but guessing penalty students earn negative x or something like that or you know wrong wrong answer penalty i don't know I, I some way to sort of explain that they get a negative point value of this much um might be helpful and i actually found the jira a while ago and i didn't jot it down unfortunately of where this actually it was actually worse before so the actual uh database column is called discount and i believe that was actually the name of it in the ui as well um, and then i don't remember who just added a comment in one of the jeers about it and then it got changed in a future version so that's where this current uh point step to correct answer came from so it's, this would be the third version but just finding the database column to get this query was trial and error because discount kind of makes sense, but not contextually, at least in the US. So yeah, so discount points is actually the markup text uh, usage for it. And that has to do with it being like a, a universal um, markup text. So it still says discount, you still, enter discount if you want to create it during a create using markup text uh, workflow. Thanks all. Uh, so I, I can create a JIRA that just kind of lays this out. Um, I'll tag TNL on it. 
Um, I'll tag you as well, Adam, to uh, include uh, maybe some images. I see you've added the exact ones to uh, the Etherpad, but maybe just putting the images as well, just so that we have some references in the JIRA as well. Can, can you add me as a watcher too, please, Marty? I can add watchers. Or yeah, yeah, on the on the JIRA. I'm not sure Did everybody you... can do that, Tiffany. You might have to do it yourself. I can, okay, I, mean, I, you think... and, I can bump you in Slack once it's created. Sounds good. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Marty. Really appreciate these um, ideas and com discussions. This is super helpful. I am going to remove your presenter privileges, am I? Let's see. Now I don't know how to do that. Maybe I just have to give them back to myself. Okay, there we go. All right, so we I think we have time. Well, we do have time for some JIRAs and... Uh, I am going to go out of order and start with the one that Daniel Marino posted. Um, let me share. Hello. Do you hear me? Right. Yeah, just a second. Let me uh, do some sharing here. Give me just a second. Uh, okay, I, I will try to explain myself. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Daniel Merino from UPNA. Uh, as you can see in the URA, uh, our Data Protection Counselor has uh, requested uh, as a, a development to complain the EDPR. The EDPR is the European Lab about uh, Data Privacy. Uh, we are several universities here in Spain inter interested in this uh, development. And this law, the GDPR, uh, tries to set a middle point uh, between the data privacy and transparency. That are uh, quite uh, opposite, opposite concepts. Uh, in short, uh, we need to publish uh, rights for students so students can compare the rights uh, with the other rights of their classmates. And the information they uh, must uh, see uh, is the right, uh, the name and the surname of the, of the classmates. And we know that uh, this can be scary for, uh, for you under fair law. So uh, I have tried to plan a uh, a future uh, very, config very configurable. Uh, first of uh, all, uh, it will be disabled by default, uh, but I, I think that it can be useful also for you, for uh, institutions under third parallel, because the rates uh, could be anonymized and randomized, so students can see uh, other rates, but they, they don't know uh, who are from. Uh, I have uh, made uh, and I have uploaded uh, into the Jira ticket some screenshots with drafts of the future. Uh, this is uh, how I have planned to to be. And uh, uh, there are uh, some screenshots also uh, for par compliant. Uh, and uh, as I have written in the in, the, in other path, uh, before we ask for a budget, I would like to know that you agree and like the feature and you are okay with the with the screenshots because uh, if we ask for the budget and later somebody says that something is wrong uh, obviously the budget will, could be increased so uh, we want to know that it's uh, okay mm -hmm. for you so uh, please uh, you can give me all uh, your feedback in the Jira ticket and feel free to to put uh, comments, uh, questions, uh, whatever you, you like. And here with me is uh, Miguel from EDF. It's uh, here to attend your questions. And um, that's all. Thank you very much. Daniel, thank you. And I, I know a few people have already commented in that JIRA, Marty being one of them, and um, also Matt Jones. 
it seems to me that if this is disabled by default and is managed by a property that and can be anonymized and randomized as as you're outlining it sounds like a good feature could be useful any um, others thoughts one question that I have is, can the individual check boxes be controlled by properties? Because, for example, in U.S. institutions, it might be nice to allow the anonymized, um, you know, no, uh, no display of student names, but allow the anonymized display of grades. So it would be nice if, if we could have those check boxes. Can you go back to the screenshot with the check boxes please yep um let me get there this one yes yeah that one so like if there was a system property to choose like just grades and maybe teacher comments and then not have the names and surnames check boxes available because those would be a FERPA uh violation was the names and surnames so uh. Yes, definitely, I agree with that. Uh, I have thought about that because uh, it can be dangerous to get the teachers the option to choose which uh, which fields can be displayed. So a uh, property to enable the properties that the system admin, admins uh, just want, uh, it's uh, a, a very good idea. Yeah, so just a sort of a property for each checkbox, not just for the the feature on a whole because I think it would be nice if instructors do want to show the grades like aggregate grades that's fine um, but showing the names and surnames and such um, that would be FERPA violations. But don't they already kind of get this if you allow the statistics to be released? I mean, they, they can yeah. see how they how they're doing. They don't see the actual individual grades but but they can see where they stand or sit um, in relation to the rest of their, their classmates in general. <clears throat> That's true. Yeah, if the, if the statistics are able to be shown yeah. um, already, then that is already there. But um, it would be potentially more accessible to a screen reader user. The statistics as it is currently designed is not at all screen reader accessible. Uh, which is its own problem but. but but would you want to sit there and listen to a screen reader read a hundred different numbers to you probably not no i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, yeah i i don't know that i'd want to see this anyway as a student but <laughs> uh, i mean I, I i understand wanting to to know kind of how you sit with relation to the the other students in the course um but i think the kind of the histogram does that and i understand why that's not necessarily the best presentation for um people with vision issues but um just that general where am i in relation to everyone else you know what's the mean am i above it am i below it kind of thing is usually sufficient for what students would want to know they don't need to see i don't see why they need to see all the individual numbers if they can i put a name to it then then the numbers are just numbers and don't really mean anything to me yeah i i agree with you it would be better to have them as sort of groups of grades like you know this percent of the class earned 10 or whatever um, right rather than have them as individual listings of grades but just how many students in the class earned a particular one uh, that's kind of like what Samago does in the uh, statistics page. It says, you know, there are uh, this many answers were correct and this many mm -hmm. were incorrect percentage wise per question and per answer option. Great. This is really a cool feature, Daniel. Thanks for bringing it to us. Uh, thank you very much for your comments, and as I have said, uh, please feel free to write them in the in the URA. So I, I think we are going uh, forward with this development. Thank you very much. 
All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to, I think Adam added this. Remove use of multi-select two sides. This should be brief. Um, I need to add some screenshots to the JIRA. So if you were to visit the JIRA currently, thing, but um, to describe the issue, when an instructor groups within a site, they're presented with two um, select boxes, where on the left-hand side, it would show them roles and the respective users, or sorry, members of a site. And on the right hand side, it shows you members of the group. And it, from what I understand from Sam Odenhoff, the UI of that page uses a tool called multi select two sides. Because what you would do is you would select your users on the left hand side and move them over to the right hand side. And then it shows you the intersection. If the user has already been moved, it no longer shows you that user on the left-hand side to be moved into the group. The problem is that this tool does not work on the iPad at all. And any discussion regarding modifying the tool to work on the iPad is immediately closed. So the group management UI fails on tablets. It needs to be modified or a new tool used to build the UI. And um, it, it's unclear where this development effort should go. Uh, either the new tool needs to be found, identified, and incorporated, or the UI needs to be entirely revamped. Um, I'm not good with Omnigraphle or anything re related to building mockups, but one of the things that occurred to me is that potentially this is an area for UI renovation, where instead of two selection boxes, you could potentially use something like the gradebook, where you have users along the left-hand side, groups along the top, where you would choose which group column to add in. And then in the table, you would have a series of check boxes in order to instantiate which user should or should not be a member of a particular group. The UI could get hairy for sites that have hundreds of members or hundreds of groups. And Tiffany, you know, I would welcome any comment regarding what would be an accessible interface for group management. But um, it's clear we have a problem here, and I welcome any and all comments on the JIRA. So um, I thought about this somewhat, John Buckingham from Pepperdine, and I thought about this somewhat when we were working on the uh, mock-ups for the, um, the group, the auto groups wizard. Um, and that final page in the auto groups wizard that shows you a preview of what groups you're going to get. Um, we had discussed during that uh, process of developing those mockups that we would like that page to have some sort of a drag and drop or arrow key up and down uh, feature to move the members among the groups. And I, I kind of like that idea. You know, again, it would have to be keyboard accessible with like the UD keys or something like that. Um, but um, I feel like that would be an interesting sort of possible route to go. I don't know if you can pull up that, uh, if you're sharing, if you can pull up that screen uh, with the preview um, thing. Sure. And let's see, I should be able to find it on night. Yeah, nightly. Uh, do you care which, you want me to go to trunk? Experimental is fine. Well, I picked trunk. <laughs> okay. That, yeah, that works. Whatever. All right. Uh, hold on. I'll get to the share in a second. So if you go to... In. Oh, you're still on. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not in yet. Hold on. I'll, I'll switch um, sharing in a I'm second. I'm in my instance in a test side if you want to give me sharing permission. Oh, fine. Yeah, sure. I'd love to.
All right, Adam, go for it. Where do I? Uh, test site and going through auto generated groups. Yep. So just create at least a couple of groups. You need a number of groups. Yeah, two groups. <laughs> four groups. Yeah, okay. So this screen is what uh, we kind of envisioned as as a later stage of having it be kind of more um, where you would be able to say drag and drop or, or use U and D keys or somehow move these members uh, from one group to another uh, before you do the creation of the groups. You know, let's say you wanted, uh, you know, one of your, your, you wanted Laura, let's say Laura in, you know, team one instead of team three, you could move her over there and, you know, Aaron in, in team three. So you could move them around in some way. That was the sort of second stage desire for this uh, screen would be the ability to move them around. And I, I wonder if something like that. I think moving, you know, especially if if you have more than four groups or, or if however many groups you have are off the screen, it's going to be unwieldy to drag and drop these mm -hmm. names around. So I'm not sure that is a well, I think one of the thoughts too was like having um, a column to the right of these where you would have a drop down, kind of like the um, you know the site info where you're changing uh, role or um, or status. So there would be a, a column in the right to the right of role or to the left of name uh, where you could select a different group, one of the other group names from that uh, from that. Um, drop down and then you would sort of update it uh, to move them. Yeah, I think it would be, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I think it would, might be helpful to do some mock-up, design mock-ups, whoever wants to, you know, contribute ideas <clears throat> um, to see, you know, just as some examples, think it through a little bit and thank you, Adam. Absolutely. Um, so Adam, I don't know if you're interested in doing that or if anybody else on the call is interested in doing that, but I think that is going to be needed before we can do anything here. We just somebody who wants to um, create some mock-ups for consideration would be useful. I think making a mock-up depends on, you know, the desired or group thought approach, you know, which interface yeah. would be best. Exactly. Or maybe different folks could, you know, throw their ideas at that to, and then come back to the group. Add them to the it's, hero. it's clear that it's a pain point. It's not clear what yeah. the best way forward should be. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would encourage you to come to one of the UX calls if you can. That's going to be in a few minutes for today's, but we're looking at tests and quizzes. Um, but maybe uh, talk to Sean and Jolie about getting on the next uh, UX call to talk about this, because I think that would be helpful to get perspectives from that group. Mm -hmm. Um, and possibly once you have some ideas or more concrete ideas, uh, come to the accessibility working group. Uh, and those meetings are on Fridays. I don't know if you have the chance to do that, Adam, but. Um, Sounds good. I'll try and get on the agenda for the next UX group and then an eye to accessibility once it's been hashed out there. Wonderful. Great suggestion. Thank you, Tiffany. I, excuse me. We're at four minutes to the top of the hour according to my clock um i don't think we have time to dive into another jira um but these have been really enlightening and and good conversation so thanks i will move the remaining jiras um to our parking lot for next meeting and that meeting is on march 17th 
Uh, Tiffany is going to show in that meeting, she's going to demo the um, new export enhancements that we've done at UVA um, to share with you guys. Um, we're hoping to contribute it back uh, to the community. Um, I want to get your um, eyes on it first. So Tiffany has agreed to do that. And then I'm sure we'll also have time to, to cover some more JIRAs. Uh, just to clarify, that's exporting tests and quizzes scores. But I don't know what I said, but thank you. <laughs> you said export capabilities. I don't think you mentioned what tool it was from. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, tests and quizzes. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. So good to see you and hope your semesters are going well. And I'm sure I'll see you at a future teaching and learning calls. I just won't be facilitating them. And if any of you are interested in, you know, being a facilitator for these calls, please let me know or Wilma know um, or Charles, um, any of us. And, um, uh, you know, it's pretty rewarding and fun. Um, not, not too odious in terms of organization. So um, it would be great to have another person um, helping out with that. Thanks again. Any other comments from anybody before we adjourn? Well, just good luck with your upgrade and congratulations on your upcoming retirement. Thank you, Charles. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Jorge. All right, everybody, I'm going to stop the recording.